Hello everyone, it's Linda from Sticky With Glitter here. Um, I'm back again with the next part of my colouring tutorial and today I'll be showing you how I add my finishing touches to hair. Now this is a completely optional step, um, you don't have to do it, you can just deepen your um, shadows on your hair like we did, just adding a bit more distress ink to those areas that are darker. You can also brush. You can also use your brush um, just to. I haven't got any ink on this. It's just to show you just to to pull up some lines um, if you want to. If you don't want to use the pen end of your distress ink marker, or if you're not using markers, you're using pads or uh, reinkers. However, <clears throat> personally. I'm showing you today the way that I do it with a Distress Ink marker. And the end that I use on the Distress Ink marker is, this is good in camera, not that end. It's the nib or pen end, let me just get into focus there. So it's this end on your marker. And you can tell that easily when you pick it up because it's got the little black ridge around it that doesn't disappear when you click your cap on. Now I don't use this method with every single um, type of hair that I colour. It doesn't work, it doesn't look as good in my opinion when you have um, hair with large sections, large kind of rounded sections. Uh, it's also more difficult with curly hair though I do use it on some wavy hair and curly hair. But mostly I will use this technique where the hair has got uh, specific strands like this. As you can see, the artist Krista Lee Smith has drawn lots of strands into the hair. So you've already got those as a guide and we're just working basically on those and between those to add a bit more definition and texture to the hair and in doing that you will also build up further shadows in the hair which helps to break it up and make it more dimensional. Okay, so all you'll need today is your image that you've already done your basic hair colouring on, and you will need your Distress Ink marker. Obviously we've done this in blonde with walnut stain as the darker areas, so I'm using my walnut stain Distress Ink marker. And that's all you'll need, no brushes, no water, nothing else, just purely the Distress Ink marker. It's sometimes handy to have a bit of water and a brush just in, and some paper just in case you uh, make a mistake and you want to blend it out. Uh, but purely from a, a colouring point of view, all you will need is your marker. So let's make a start. So I'm going to start off at the areas that are going to be the darkest. So for example here in this section which is behind her face and ear and also behind this forward bit of hair will be really quite dark. So I'm going to start off and just put my nib on the paper and I'm going to pull it towards me. You can turn your, your um, drawing round if you want and go the other way. It's entirely up to you. Find the way that suits you best. I kind of do both ways depending on, um, depending where on the image I'm, I'm colouring really. But you know, you just have to find what works best for you. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with the nib. Don't keep the nib on the paper because the ink will bleed out into the paper. But when you're ready to go, you will put your, your nib on the paper and just draw it down towards you. Just keep your touch light and fairly quick and you're just going to draw it down and lift it at the end. Don't keep it on the paper because it will bleed out and you'll get, you'll get a more solid line. What we want is something that starts and tapers out and it's a little bit harder to do it with a marker like this than it is, say for example, if you're used to doing a flicking action with your Copics. Um, but it's, it's very similar. So if you have done um, colouring with Copic markers 
and you're used to colouring in strands of hair, it's a similar action. You just have to be a little a bit more careful, a bit lighter I think in general, but we'll go ahead and you can see what I do. So first of all I'm going to pick where a strand is and just use that as my guide. And it doesn't matter if you go over the strand and you don't keep on the line, that's entirely fine, but you want to go in the direction that the strands are going. As you can see, I'm not going all the way down because I don't want those lines going all the way down and darkening my nice highlight areas. But I am going into those highlight areas, which will break it up. So what we will end up with is an area where you've got your highlight area here and then you've got an area of highlight that's broken up by darker strands, then going into your much darker area. And you'll get a much more graduated tone. Just be careful when you're doing it near the face because you don't want to ruin all your lovely work by bleeding your dark walnut stain marker into her light coloured skin. And as you can see to start I'm just spacing that out. I'm not putting lots of lines close together. You don't want it the same darkness everywhere and typically I will put strands in and then I will stand back and look at it when I've done the whole thing and then I'll go back in and I'll darken some areas up but you'll see that as I go along. Now here for example I'm going to flick away from myself I could turn it around and pull it towards me it's just the way I do it as I say whatever is most comfortable for you however it works for you you know you can practice um, I would suggest very much that you just kind of rough colour something, um, a stamped image on a, on a scrap of paper, not the whole thing, and just practice doing some of the, the strands so that you get used to the action because you don't want to ruin your picture if you're happy with the way your hair's come out. You don't want to go in and then think, oh, no, I'm not quite used to this. I mean, what you've done. So do a bit of practice first. Give to paper, move it along and as I say you're just lifting it off the paper at the end so you don't get a, a solid line at the end. And you can see already we're starting to get a bit more definition in the hair. I'm going to go a bit more dark in here. Bear in mind that because these are watercolours, as it dries it will lighten. So when you finish you probably will look at it and think oh that's a bit lighter than I intended it looked darker when I coloured it in I'll go back in and you can but you can easily go back in um, and just add more so all the areas where we added a bit of darker colour I'm just going in here with my marker following the, the direction of the hair. You've already mapped out your shadows with your walnut stain, so it kind of makes it easier to see where you need to put down the colour.
keep your strokes all the same length. Obviously you're wanting to add that texture and definition so you'll use some short strokes and some longer strokes. This helps to break it up more. See here, I'm coming up a bit further towards the back of her hair. And I apologise if my hand is covering what I'm doing, it's quite difficult to do this and keep it in, in camera. Use the noise such as somebody going out of the door trying to be quiet. Okay, so as you can see already, we're getting a lot more definition to the hair. Our darker areas are getting darker, but also it's being broken up. There's much more texture. As you can see, I'm following the direction of the hair. I'm not using all straight strokes. I'm curving some of my strokes. Now you may have to practice for a while um, to get that. Believe me, my first efforts were not perfect by any means.
As you can see there, I'm just continuing all the way down on a few of the strands. Just to break the hair up a little bit. If you want to keep your hair um, very light, you wouldn't do that. It's going to go in very lightly here and just I want to keep my cast shadow there a little bit. Okay, so I think that should give you the basic idea. I'm not finished by any means here, um, but I'm just going to speed the video up a little bit here um, so it doesn't take too long. I think I'm probably going to stop there otherwise I'll make the hair too dark sometimes what I do is when the image is all colored up as in I've got the the dress done and the background done if I'm using a background and not fussy cutting I'll take another look and I may just go in in one or two places and just add a little bit more but I think that is certainly enough for now. So now you can see that there is a lot more definition. Your hair is coming forward more where it's forward. 
you can see even within the bits that are forward there are strands and areas that are behind other areas or where the light doesn't hit. So it just, for me, it finishes it off. Um, if you prefer <clears throat> a much softer effect, and obviously you can leave out this stage, it is entirely up to you. You know, colouring is all about what you like and what works for you, which is why I always advise to try lots of different ways. Look at lots of different people's colouring. Find what you like. Find what works for you. So I hope my tutorial has helped you today, or at least that you found it interesting. And if it has, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.